Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. This is the second part of a two-part video looking at how to use a colorimeter to determine the concentration of glucose in a solution. In this video, I'm going to show you how to produce a calibration curve. I'm then going to take you through the method for using the colorimeter. OK, now in this practical, we need to determine the concentration of glucose in a sample. As we saw in the last video, when we react Benedict solution with glucose, the colour of the Benedict solution becomes less blue. And we can measure this change using a colorimeter. Now the problem is that the colorimeter cannot tell us the actual concentration of glucose. So to address that, we need to prepare a whole range of known glucose concentrations. We then react each of those solutions with Benedict's and filter off the red precipitate. We then use a colorimeter to see how much red light is absorbed by each solution. We carry out the same procedure with our unknown solution, and by comparing our unknown solution with our known solutions, we can determine the concentration of glucose in our unknown solution. Scientists call this a calibration curve. OK, so first we set up six test tubes. We're going to start with a known concentration of glucose, for example 5 millimoles per decimeter cubed, and create a range of dilutions from that. We call our known concentration our stock solution. Using a syringe, we place 5 cm3 of our stock solution into test tube 1. So this test tube contains a glucose solution with a concentration of 5 millimoles per decimeter cubed. In test tube 2, we add 4 cm3 of our stock solution plus 1 cm3 of distilled water. So this contains a glucose solution with a concentration of 4 millimoles per decimeter cubed. In test tube 3, we add 3 cm3 of our stock solution plus 2 cm3 of distilled water. This test tube contains a glucose solution with a concentration of 3 millimoles per decimeter cubed. In test tube 4, we add 2 cm3 of stock solution plus 3 cm3 of distilled water. So this test tube has a glucose solution with a concentration of 2 millimoles per decimeter cubed. In test tube 5, we add 1 cm3 of stock solution plus 4 cm3 of distilled water. This test tube contains a glucose solution with a concentration of 1 millimole per decimeter cubed. Finally, to test tube 6, we add 5 cm3 of distilled water. This means that test tube 6 contains no glucose at all. Next, we set up a test tube containing 5 cm3 of our unknown concentration of glucose. Now, at this stage, we need to add 5 cm3 of Benedict solution to each test tube and mix them thoroughly. We then place all the test tubes in a boiling water bath for 5 minutes. During this time, the Benedict solution can react with the glucose, producing a red precipitate. Finally, we filter each solution into a fresh test tube. This removes the precipitate leaving the remaining Benedict solution. Now, instead of filtering, we could use a centrifuge to separate the solution from the precipitate. Coming up, we look at how to use the colorimeter and how to analyze the results. OK, so we're going to start by looking at how to use the colorimeter. Now, with some colorimeters, you can place test tubes directly into the colorimeter. However, in other colorimeters, you need to transfer all of your solutions into small plastic containers called cuvettes. Cuvettes have two clear transparent sides and two sides which are translucent. We always place the cuvettes into the colorimeter so that the light passes through the transparent sides. First, we set the colorimeter onto the red filter. That's because red is the complementary colour to blue. In other words, red will be the colour most absorbed by a blue solution. We then set the colorimeter to measure absorption. In other words, how much red light is absorbed by the solution. We then place a cuvette containing just distilled water into the colorimeter and set the colorimeter to zero. Essentially, we're telling the colorimeter to consider distilled water to absorb zero red light. Now we use the colorimeter to read the absorbances of all of our solutions. At this stage, we plot the absorbances of our dilution series on a graph like this. We can now use this calibration curve to determine the concentration of glucose in our unknown sample. Imagine that the unknown sample has an absorbance of 0.825. We draw a horizontal line from 0.825 on the y-axis to the line on the graph. We then draw a vertical line down to the x-axis 
and read off the glucose concentration. This tells us that our unknown sample has a glucose concentration of 2.5 millimoles per decimeter cubed. Now, if the absorbance of the unknown sample is too great to read off the calibration curve, then you need to dilute the solution and read the absorbance again. But remember that you need to take into account the dilution factor when determining the concentration of glucose. OK, so hopefully now you can describe how to use a colorimeter to determine the concentration of glucose in a solution. Thank you.